Hello, I am Hans. I've been working on something for the last uh, five months and I wanted to present it to you. Uh, so, to you all. And so, um, what I've been working on is a brand new uh, rewrite of the Mr. FPG firmware. And so, it's a new firmware front end for um, the D10 Nano. And uh, that is hopefully, like, that will be hopefully when it's complete. 100% compatible with uh, Mr. FPGA cores uh, for hardware emulation, FPGA emulation, whatever you want to call it. Um, so you can see here I have my uh, my little setup. I have uh, a keyboard, which is the 8-bit do keyboard. Uh, these buttons haven't been con con um, uh, configured, so they don't they won't work uh, with my setup. But uh, I have a small Falcon tournament controller. I have a game um, a GameCube controller that's connected through the GameCube USB interface from Nintendo. So this is a pure setup. Uh, this is a real controller. And then I have my D10 Nano here that I'm going to start. And um, you will see I'm going to start into Mr. itself. And I will, um, from there, I will start the Golem FPGA. Uh, software. So, you there are instructions. You can see the link on uh, this QR code here. There will be instructions. Uh, this is the presentation, uh, the the Patreon link. Uh, please support us on Patreon, and uh, there will be um, uh, there is a link to the to the script to start Golem. So basically, you just put it in your SD card, the same way you put other scripts. And you go into scripts on your mister. Um, yes, this is dangerous. Scripts are dangerous. Um, and then you start Golem here. It downloads and updates automatically to the latest version, if there is one. And then it just starts Golem. Um, so as you can see, oh, I have some uh, configuration already. I have some settings. So I'm going to do into settings, and I'm going to do reset all settings. Um, this will uh, restart. The computer, delete the files, restart the computer, and then I'll go back. Uh, in the meantime, I can talk a little bit about the project. So, Golem is essentially a rewrite from scratch in um, um, in Rust. Rust is a modern language with a lot of features. What's going on here? Bad URL. Oh, that happens sometimes, and I still don't know why. It, I'll just restart it. Um, I didn't do anything special. But okay, so what I was saying is that Golem is a uh, rewrite in Rust in, on Scratch uh, for the D10 Nano that is fully compatible with Mr. Right now, there's still some Mr. Co code. Uh, the way Mr. was built, at least I can reuse some of its code. And um, um, there you go. Okay, so. And, and essentially, uh, it's compatible with a few cores. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But um, this is the main menu for Golem. Um, we'll, one of the things that I would like to do as a far, far ahead, like as a future feature, is having like a full, uh, proper uh, GUI for selecting games, where you can see the, the, the cover for games that have covers or anything like that, choosing save states. Uh, there's going to be a third option. Once I support save states, you can just restart the game automatically to the save state that you have. But right now, um, you have games. There's zero. You have cores. There is zero. Settings. Uh, tools, which is just debugging tools. Testers, basically for people who are working on it. About, which I just kind of remember that it's uh, it's not implemented. Uh, there would there will be a link here to uh, to go to the. The, the Patreon, I guess, and uh, quit and go back to Mr. So this is important. I want to mention that using Golem on your Mr. setup will not break your Mr. I do not touch your files. I just I have one directory with all the files that I need in there, um, including cores that you download uh, from the cloud. Um, for example, if we go to core, cores, we can load core manually, or you can manage cores, which allows you to download automatically and install. So install, install, install. Let's say I don't want the input tester. I can install the chess and the NES core. And then 
I can just download and install the selected cores, and now I have the chest and the nest core. Um, and these are all downloaded in a, in a folder, everything is separated. If you delete the folder, there's no files, it's basically the same as your mystery from before. Um, and so, uh, well, I can start from the cores menu, I can start a core, like for example, I can go into chess, and then I can um, wait for the core to start. This is going to take a second. I'm not sure why, I need to figure out, yeah. So, okay, so now that we're in the core, um, we need a little bit better settings for knowing if the core uh, needs to open the menu or not, but we always open the menu right now if you launch the core itself. But, um, so the core menu is just reset core, core settings, input mapping, debug info, the version itself, back and quit. Go, quit goes back into the, uh, the, the main menu and back just goes into the core itself. As you can see, this is the uh, the stupidest chess uh, engine. I mean, I've been I've been here anyway. So, okay. Uh, now, menu is on F12 by default, and in the core settings, you can just set the settings as usual. Uh, it supports almost all the settings, definitely all the options and triggers, um, but it does not support. Uh, save states yet. This is something I'm going to work on really soon. And then you can do uh, debug info. It's just debug info. It's basically flags for uh, people using the the, the, the FPGA. It, it doesn't even work properly. I need a better font. I need a better uh, setup error. But, and then I can change the input mapping. Uh, so interestingly, inside the cores, there's two things. There's global shortcuts for all cores. Show the menu. Uh, reset the core and quit the core. So if you go to show the menu, uh, you can remap, uh, remap it, and if you want, you can remap it to the key one, which you know you probably don't want that. But something interesting is that you can use a controller and you can uh, do uh, multiple key shortcuts. So uh, I'm going to use the select button and the L, the left shoulder, and then show menu is now back in left shoulder. And if I go here, I press F12, nothing happens. I press the left shoulder, nothing happens, but I press both at the same time, and then I get back to the core. Um, and as you can, s as you've probably noticed, um, there are um, for each triggers or option there you can set up a, a mapping. And so, for example, um, uh, overlay. I'm gonna put the overlay on. I like sometimes having the overlay just right shoulder. And so if I want to just switch the overlay, I can just switch it like that, which can be convenient. So now I go back. Um, a, a feature that will come later, and these are remembered for the cores. So if you quit the core and restart the core, these are going to be the same. Um, an interesting thing that will be added in the future is going to be having multiple uh, shortcuts for the same menu. And right now we don't check if... Uh, for. I, I, for the same mapping, having multiple, so if I want the show menu to be F12 or select and left shoulder, I should be able to do that. Um, and right now you can assign to multiple, you can assign the same shortcut to multiple uh, inputs, uh, options. Um, the first one to hit is just going to be, like it's not, it's not consistent, so uh, just be careful if you set the same one. We should probably show a warning, an error message or something. And so input mapping, if I want to quit the core and I want to set that to uh, F1, and voila. And then uh, I'm back here and I press F1 and go back to the main menu. So, oh, yeah, sometimes there's graphical bugs that happen. We, this is something that, it's an alpha. Uh, it happens. So if I start the nest, the same bugs are going to keep happening, unfortunately. So I'm going to start talking just about um, yeah. Um, I'm going to just talk about the, uh, well, I'm going to restart instead. Oh, well, that's not too bad. If there's no back. Okay. So there is another feature uh, which uses uh, games, which discover your games on your machine. Manage game will um, take this, the core that you have installed 
and you basically just scan the directory uh, that you want to use for that and it will, the cores that you have installed, it will search them and it has a database online, unfortunately. Uh, there's a way, if you add dat files, if you know what a dat file is, you can go to dat umatic and download dat files for your cores and then it can use that instead of the online service. If there is no uh, internet, of course, it's not going to be able to use the online service, but just for presentation's sake, I have a few games here, Golem games. Um, for the for multiple platforms, I have GBA, Super Nintendo, Neo Geo, um, all go, all games that I own, um, and a few NES games. And if I do select current directory, it's going to scan the directory. It's going to upload the SHAs and then identify them uh, and download them. Not download them, sorry. Download the metadata, which is just the title right now, um, and the core that it's uh, linked to. So. Uh, as you can see, I have Super Mario Bros. Uh, maybe you have hundreds of thousands. I have tested on my uh, desktop. This actually all everything works on your desktop, except starting the core itself. Um, and I have like hundreds of them, and it, it worked pretty well. So if I start Mario Bros. Two because I like Mario Bros. Two, I don't. That's a lie. Mario Bros. Three, my favorite on the NES. No originality. I never go for the little guy or anything like that. But essentially, yeah. So the image is still wonky. Uh, but if I do F1 to quit the core, there you go. And um, so if you have multiple games, yeah, we're back to, I think, a crappy picture. But if you have multiple games, um, you can sort by the name, uh, name reversed, the core name last added, last played, which was Mario with Bros 2, and favorite. So favorite, if I want to put Doc Hunt uh, as my favorite, there you go. So now my favorite is just Doc Hunt, basically. Um, same for cores, but, um, oh, that's the core details. Yeah, I should probably do more than that. And of course, settings, input mapping, reset all settings will delete the whole installation from Golem and you can just restart the mister and that's it. That's as if it never existed. Um, and uh, well, tools is just testing tools. And then if you quit Golem, you restart the system and you go back to mister and and Anytime uh, now, you'll just be back in your Mr. installation. There you go. And that's it. That was the introduction to Golem. Uh, we looked at all the features. Um, the way you can help is uh, join our, our Patreon. We have a Patreon. Um, talk, talk about it. Make people aware about uh, of it. Test it. File bugs, please. If you know how to code, if you know how to write. You don't need to code to help. You don't need to code to actually do contributions. I'm looking for uh, things uh, like translations. I want to do translations really soon. Uh, this is not something that should take a lot of time. Uh, but as soon as the translation is, is done, we will need a lot of translators, for example, for all languages. Uh, those kind of things. Essentially, this is a project that is just starting. And I, I hope you like it. Thanks.